There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with two amazing people in different locations, I think, right now. And that is actually Dr. Sandra Kaufman and Stephen McCain, both of mine, both good friends and both making their second appearance on the Jay Campbell podcast. How are you, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> we, we are good in Miami, Steve. Yeah, we're good in Las Vegas. How hot is it in Vegas right now? I think it was supposed to be 117 today. So it has not cooled off since I saw you two weekends ago. No, and I I haven't even stepped outside. In all honesty, like usually I'll go outside, but today I, I just we our AC and well one of the AC units is uh, is out. Um, and so one not, zone in the house we can't go into. Yeah, one zone in the house. Well, fortunately, my office is uh, is all good, so uh, I'm fine. Like, I'll, I'll just actually I'll awesome. just work and sleep and work and sleep. You know. That's literally amazing. I mean, I remember when I lived in Vegas, when I told you in Red Rock Country Club, we had the dual zone too. And that one that happened to me one time, but when it happened to me, it was actually in the winter. So it wasn't as bad of a deal. Okay. Awesome. So Sandra's in Miami and I'm in Tampa. Okay. So as Steven knows, cause we were talking about this two weeks ago, I've been asking everybody, and by the way, today is July 3rd, 2024. And by the way, you guys podcast is going to run actually this month, which is very rare for the Jay Campbell podcast, but, um, we're, we're talking about exosomes versus stem cells and a lot of amazing, um, you know, age regression, anti-aging stuff today. But I've been asking my customers slash patients slash uh, podcast guests um, where they see humanity right now, right? Like in the next three to five to 10 years, are you buying humanity or are you selling humanity? I'll start with you first, Andy. <laughs> oh my God, that's a loaded question. I, 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 I was prepared for like, what's in an exosome, but we're going to talk about <laughs> rigors of humanity i think there's going to be a bifurcation of humanity whereby some are some folks are buying and some folks are selling how about yeah. for skirting the question that's awesome steven oh, i mean i'm bullish on anybody that's listening to this podcast yep you know yep. i'm probably bearish on everything else <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, well, I mean, actually, Sandra's answer is right, but it, there's a bifurcation, and I think your vibration determines where you are in that line, right? Oh, yeah. Because, I, I mean, I mean, there's a bifurcation or a duality in most of the things right, these days, right? Right, it's, right. If you look at how people treat their bodies, they're right. a huge component of 400 pound folks who don't take care of themselves. They're, you know, outrageously out of shape they don't care they're eating up dollars in the healthcare right. system it's outrageous right and then there's the other end of the spectrum where we're trying to live longer take care of ourselves do the right things and you know again there's a bifurcation of iq there's a bifurcation of politicalization we are living in a very divided world well very well said do you want to add to that Stephen, before we jump into exosomes i mean i don't know i find myself sometimes wondering if I, I, I don't know. I, I, I've just decided really not to focus on the shit too much anymore, to be honest. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 you know, like for me to sometimes buy into all of the dialogue and just be another voice, I'm just adding, adding to the fire. And so I just said, what do I want to, what's the life I want to create? What are the people I want in my life? What do I want it to look like? And um, go at it. And then anybody that doesn't fit in that and that I don't really, jive with then i don't i just separate myself and so you know i got i got really caught up during the whole covid type thing with with sure. getting very frustrated especially living in la we talked about this the yeah, last podcast yeah, yeah many times you really yeah. you got me really rant rammed you know 
fired up when, you know, and, uh, but I, I just, since then, I just said, you know, I, I just, I'm trying to keep a clean mind and my environment around me clean and just let it be, you know, like, and just adjust shit hits the fan, adjust shit hits the fan again, adjust, just keep, keep moving, shucking and jiving and, and making the best of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I mean, honestly, I love both your answers and Sandra, that's, we can start right there. Cause we're going to jump into exosomes, but yeah, I mean, like I did a podcast earlier today with a really big influencer in uh, the UK, Ireland named Brian Keen. And he was like, amazing. I mean, all three of us would love him. Um, and he was just telling me, we were talking about the people that have let themselves go. And, you know, we were attempting to understand the psycho spiritual motives of people who literally, as you were saying, literally allow themselves to get to 400 pounds and what they're really thinking about. Like, what, you know, what is their justification? Like what's really going on in their life? And yeah, you could say trauma and environmental contamination and shitty food and not moving and all these different things. But really the question is, is like rooted in like, what do they look into every day when they look in the mirror? Because clearly they're not seeing themselves because no person who's literally here in third density to live would allow themselves, you know, or desire themselves to get that way. So it's like, it's a, it's a really multifaceted um, conversation and really question around why people allow themselves to fall there. But as you said, that's the dividing line. Well, the, the funny thing is I think that most well, well, let me back up. We live in this population, especially Steve, that barricades himself in it in, in, in a perfectly beautiful building. And I've been there. It's gorgeous and surrounds himself yep. by very beautiful people who exercise all the time. Uh, I don't have that luxury. I'm an anesthesiologist. So right. I see society from bottom to top and it's ugly. It is really, truly ugly. Uh, and in fact, I just came from the UK. I was lecturing at a health seminar in Oxford last weekend. It's still a little jet lagged, actually. But uh you know, it's the same over there. So I understand what your, you know, your previous interviewee was talking about. You what, think all this yeah. person we are, the the lack of ability to look in the mirror, see what you're doing to yourself and understand that there is a different way of living. It's a very narrow viewpoint that we see, but very few people actually do. And thankfully, we, well, thankfully we have the internet, right? Because the internet allows us groups of like-minded people to congregate together. And then when we congregate together online, we also congregate together physically. I mean, you know, I was with Stephen less than 10 days ago or 10 days ago now. No, actually less than 10 days ago. And yeah, we had amazing conversations and we were all kind of like talking about the same things and, you know, the same kind of ideas, you know, creation things all come together. So, I mean, I think we're eventually going to get to exosomes in this conversation, but like, I, I, I really do think that what you said is what's happening organic. That there is a separation already ongoing and the people that are going to be 400 pounds and beam their consciousness into the cloud are going to go their path. And people like us who are, you know, into the anti-aging and, you know, doing all the things we do to live younger and longer and stronger are going to do what we do. And we're all just going to naturally coalesce. Well, yeah. no, I think you're spot on. Yeah, I, I, I just, I was just at the... U.S. Olympic trials for gymnastics, and I hung out with all my old Olympic teammates, and they are all banged up. Some of them are one. One of them had a a, 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 a replacement and a, a knuckle. You know, another girl that was on a team that's quite a bit younger than me uh, by well over a decade. I saw that picture. Had and she hip was replacements, obese. and yeah. and I look at it, and I'm talking to them about yeah. some of the stuff that you know, I'm aware of and that we're all aware of and, right. and they're, they're intrigued and they're interested. There's, there is a lack of education. They, they yeah. don't know these things exist. They don't have somebody, you know, I, I look, it's why, you know, what, what you do on this podcast is so important because they're the education component. Look, you have, first of all, you have lazy people that are never, ever going to care, period. Right. There's nothing you can right. do about them. They need a light bulb at some moment in their life. Hopefully they get it at some point, right? Then you have the people who are just not educated. And, and those are the people I, I'm frankly, you know, I'm interested in and I like helping because, you know, a lot of these people happen to be good friends of mine, like these yeah. teammates I had that I traveled around the world with and worked our asses off. And, and you know, they need this stuff. I mean, I, they can't believe it when I say I'm 50 and I have no joint pain. I know, dude. dude I, by the way, I saw that picture of you and them and I was like, oh my God. 
the difference is insane. I'm sure you've gotten tons of comments from people about that, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's you know, and I and I man, I, it was it was really there's a lot of emotion going to that stuff. Because sure, it's it's like opening up a can of worms to a whole other world that I used to be yeah. in. That you know, I, I it's 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 very emotional. Um, yeah. And I have, you know, the fact that we're all retired now from, from being competitive, you know, we're not at each other's throats anymore. So we have the best relationships that we've ever had because we actually are done yeah. putting blame on each other. You fucked it us up. We didn't win the gold because of you. And, da, da, da. Yeah, and, yeah. and now we really kind of realize we're all in this together. And, but I had some of them begging me for, you know, certain advice and want me to help them. And I'm happy to do it. And, uh, but those, those people, I think that, you know, hey, you know, those are the people that that are out there that hopefully they get the right information because there is a lot of noise going on, too. I mean, you, I look at my YouTube feed and things like that. Insane, and the disinformation. Jesus dude. Christ, there's so much, like, noise in the system. Crap. Oh, How do you yeah. even find it? What's real or, you know? Thankfully, we're old enough and wise enough and experienced enough to know the, the signal from the noise. But the young people really are. And that's like, I know you guys all talk to them in your travels and your lectures and your speeches and your presentations and everything you do. But the young people are the one that we can help the most because they're the ones most lost because they grew up in this, you know, asking this, the answer or for the answer and thinking it tells them the truth. Right. And so they don't have any idea. When I speak to people nowadays about these kind of things that you just talking about, that's their number one complaint is like, I don't know who to listen to. Yeah. It's very difficult for me to have a, like a discerning trust of 20 different influencers or 20 different subject matter experts or, you know, somebody with a YouTube audience that doesn't actually know shit from shine, but has a very passionate, gregarious, you know, outgoing personality and charms them. So that's, I think we're immune to that again, because of our age. You know, we did not grow up in the age of technology, whereas the younger people have had a screen in their face since they were two. You know what I mean? And so how did they discern, like, who is actually telling them, you know, truth from error? And it's very difficult. And I think that is probably the greatest question mark as we go forward for the youth of like the next 20 to 30 now, years. Where do they get their info from? And now you're going to have these AI bots and, and machinery that are that are just recycling everything at a, at light speed. In infinity, you know, so you're going to have the amount of noise is just going to get compounded to such a degree that it's going to be overwhelming, I believe. Well, again, you know, and we are going to get the exotomes. It proves what Sandra said at the beginning of this, that eventually it'll just be groups of like-minded. And so we are going to be speaking amongst each other. And so it'll be easy, whereas the dissonant, you know, again, just call them the dissonant 400 pound beamed up you know, beam me up, Scotty, you know, into the metaverse or whatever the hell it is, are going to be in their world. And so we won't even have a conflict. Whereas now, like you said, that's where it is. And that's why it's so hard because everybody is still in the same boat. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's talk about that. So, so I'm, I'm going to set this up. So I have done, as Stephen knows, because I told him, Sandra, I haven't talked to you in a while, but I, I've done a bunch of different stem cell treatments in the United States recently. And my wife and I together and very illustrious, accomplished physicians that you all know and love. And we've gotten absolutely nothing from it. And that's prior to uh, getting a lot of, from it, prior to COVID, uh, you know, prior to the vax and everything that's been going on subsequently since then. Um, but I don't have that issue when I go to Mexico, Tijuana, Playa del Carmen, uh, I've also done it in uh, Nayarit, um, which is Puerto Vallarta. Haven't been to Panama, haven't been to Costa Rica. You know, they're obviously all down there. And there's the economic free zone. You know, all these guys are down there and stuff. But can you guys answer what is going on with like stem cells, with U.S.-based stem cells versus international stem cells and why there's so many people that are experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing? Well, so from a scientific point of view, I will tell you that I'm sort of semi-anti-stem cell. Uh, because you're getting somebody else's cell, right. right? Right. Which carries surface markers, which carries DNA, which is significantly risky. It's right. and the more you do it, the riskier it gets, honestly, because it's it's, yeah. it's similar to getting repeated blood transfusions. 
right. right? The more blood transfusions you have, the more antibodies you make, and then the less likely you are to be able to get additional blood transfusions, right? Anyway, so regardless of what country you get your stem cells from, they're going to come from different sources and they're legal yeah. different places, which is why the U.S. Right. is slightly different than not in the U.S. Right. 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 Stem cells, people like to think that these stem cells are embedding themselves in your tissue and creating more you. Yeah. But they're not. These stem cells are going in and within four to five days, they are destroyed. These cells okay. not become you because they aren't you. The only right. thing that they truly do is release exosomes. Right. Right. So, you know, assuming you're not getting damage from the cell in terms of immunogenicity and different DNA, you're, you're getting four days worth plus or minus of an exosome infusion. Okay. Interesting. From yeah. somebody else. Right. Um, which is why I'm sort of more of an exosome person. Uh, because you can just get the exosomes and they're clean. There's there's very little, there's some DNA, but not that much. Surface markers are significantly reduced. Therefore, the harm potential is significantly reduced. Uh, in addition, the cost is significantly reduced. So you leave right. the country, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, depending on where you go. You're going to do it, what, twice a year, once a year, maybe? Right. So I do exosome infusions every month for significantly lower costs because I think the homeostatic principles of having it sort of all the time is better than these intermittent infusions. Beautiful answer. Why is, why are exosomes, how do I say it? I wouldn't say it pilloried, but why are exosomes, why is there a negative stigmata in the medical community with exosomes with a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot? Because they don't know what they are. Because so to truly understand what an exosome is, is to actually understand some form of science. And most people use these words, but they have no blooming idea what they're talking about. Right? <laughs> like you could say engineered versus natural and people would be like, yeah, we don't know. Right. right. I mean, because right. in essence, all an exosome is, is a carrier device. Right. Uh, right. So if it's an engineered carrier device, you can stick chemotherapy, you can stick uh, antibodies, you can stick anything in there and direct it to where you want it to go. Endogenous exosomes or naturally produced exosomes are going to carry signaling, uh, you know, signaling messages from whatever cell they come from. Yep. Uh, um, some exosomes come from adult tissues, which means their signal is going to be old and crappy. So you have to get them from perinatal tissues, clearly not babies, but perinatal tissues. Sure. They, they carry signals for regeneration and youthfulness and growth and anti-inflammatory properties, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that people are just... Uh, they love the idea of stem, stem cells because it sounds sexy. Uh, they have no idea what an exosome is. And everyone loves right. to like travel around the world and, you know, and promote like, oh, I have done such and such cells. And it, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I think it, it sounds sexy, but it's wrong. Yeah. And stem cells were like first to the, for, to the party, right? So they've kind of garnered that, that mystique of, of being the, the panacea. And, and so uh, an exosome probably seems like it's relegated to some secondary type. Eh, it's not as good as a, a stem cell. And then there's also the fact that there's a lot of garbage out there. I mean, we've yeah. tried, we've tried different companies, exosomes, and uh, you know, you, you start to get an idea of what works and what doesn't work when you do them consistently. And I can tell you there are certain times and certain brands that I just don't notice anything when I do them. doesn't mean that it isn't doing something maybe on some level, but it's, it's, it becomes apparent to you that something works when you are consistent with it and it actually does work. Well, again, I'll just comment. Those are both good answers. My stem cell treatment were P shots, O shots. And, you know, I'm not a guy wanting to get an O shot or a P shot twice a year or anything like that. I mean, we were doing the last one that we did. The first one that we ever did was in 2021. Uh, and it was in Nayarit. It was in Puerto Vallarta. And both my wife and I had a profound experience with it. You know, like I had thicker, better erections for a couple of months and she was, you know, more eroticized, you know, better vaginal lubrication, all of that for like three or four months. And we were like, oh, these are really amazing. Let's do them again at some point. Right. And then, you know, we moved from San Diego in 2022 to lived in Mexico for a year. And so we didn't really do anything until we moved back to Florida last year. And we had, we did a treatment in August and literally again in the States got nothing. 
get another treatment thinking, oh, it must've just been a weird situation. You know, again, this is a very, very renowned per- a physician. And yeah, I'm not mentioning names because I don't want to get myself in trouble. Oh, we did another treatment in March. No. So, so I'm so, sure to guess that if you did a few days of exosomes, you'd have that same result that you had in the first place. Yep. Um, the exactly. only, so, so I have to add this because it's the caveat because people have heard me speak on this before. The only stem cells that I'm enamored with are V cells. So very small pre-embryonic stem cells that you carry in your own body get activated under stress or by laser activation uh, and turn into your own endogenous fetal stem cells. Uh, That is good because your surface markers are your own, your DNA is your own, and theoretically you have an unlimited supply. And what you can go to these centers and it's amazing, you have, you know, 60 cc's of your blood taken out, they spin it like PRP, they later activate your cells, give it back to you and voila, you have your own you know, endogenous stem cell infusion. And and that's amazing, which is safer than all of the other ones put together. So, so why is it then with exosomes? And, and, and again, I go back, you know, like you said, back to the medical conferences from like 2016, 2017, 2018. Exosomes were in a lot of the, you know, hip or newer uh, uh, conferences, the rage, and then they went away. And it seemed like they went away and when I say they went away, I mean, from an advertising marketing perspective, you know, where they were like in your face, was that because, you know, the FDA or, you know, some alphabet agency oh, yeah. the power that's on them? All, that's all FDA, all FDA driven. In fact, I will tell you that there's a scare going on right now in a lot of the XSM companies um, because they can't officially say that they do anything. Right. Isn't uh, that insane? Well, it is, but it's not. So you have to understand that. No, no, I know. Everyone lives in silos, right? And we're all (laughs) going the FDA. The problem is the FDA has been set up to identify molecules. Right. Right. And it could take a molecule that's the same every goddamn time, right? And say it does this, it doesn't do that. It's made here, it's safe or not safe, blah, blah. We all know the side effects are. We tested it on a billion people, fine. Right. Exosomes are biologics. There's yeah. no way that in the same exosome, even like the one to, to you know, to the left floating around in the serum, they're going to be different. They're going to yeah. have 200 to 250 different cytokines in there. The FDA doesn't like things that are not reproducible. So they are really on the rampage. And so companies, in order to stay afloat versus getting sued or shut down, have, you know, they've all sort of gone under the radar. So they can't advertise for this stuff, but physicians can, which is why I'm sort of a proponent of saying, yeah, we use them and they do amazing things. But we're also kind of, we don't like to talk about what companies we get them from necessarily because we don't want to throw anyone under the bus. So we can talk about tissue derivation, but not necessarily companies. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know, Steve. Right? I mean, it's, right, Steve? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, I was just at a conference and uh, heard an entire story of a whole FDA, you know, complete, uh, which mul- multi visited, uh, entertaining story of a, one of the manufacturers. And, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, I, and I get it. Like what Sandra said, you, how do you label something when it's different every single time? And, but, these things are remarkable at what they do. I mean, honestly, like anyone that's gotten their hands on some good exosomes and they've used them and they didn't, you know, try to do a hope and a prayer where they're just like, I'm just going to give it one good shot and this is what, and if it works, then that's great. But they kind of like stuck to a particular d- protocol over time. And I always tell people, hey, try it, spread it out over, you know, three months, try it like three times. And if you're using something that it works, you're going to get a result and, and these things sneak up on you. It's like watching your fingernails grow, you know, like you, you don't see them growing, but in two weeks, three weeks time, you're going to have to clip your fu- t- uh, fingernails. And all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it's the same thing that happened with me. I had this shoulder issue that I had since COVID using that damn X3 bar. I wasn't fully warmed up, tweaked my shoulder and had this issue for years. And I just sort of said, well, uh, you know, and I still could do overhead presses and everything. But after about three, somewhere between three to four exosome treatments, it just disappeared. And I literally was like, I couldn't remember which shoulder it was. I mean, I, if I thought about it, I knew because I remember, okay, yeah, it's this side. But 
fixed, you know? So it's, I don't even know where I'm going with this. They work. <laughs> and, 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 and I think that you, you, there's a, it's a bit of a landmine because a, yes, there's, you have to navigate which ones are, are work. And then can I go somewhere where I'm not getting absolutely ripped off? And then is there some sort of, you know, FDA landscape that is also clouding the, the whole thing for me? It can be a tricky, tricky thing to navigate. You know, that's why I like kind of what we do is we, we try to take a little bit of the offload a, a lot of that work for people and democratize this stuff and give them an insight route uh, on a, you know, very sort of um, low keys, simple, private little group that is like-minded like all of us. Sounds like Club Exercise. That sounds like Club X. Sounds like so. So, so yeah. what's funny about Club X is it, it started very organically. Uh, it started as I started doing it once a month, and then Steve's like, "Ooh, I want to try that." So we gave him some. He was super excited, and he's like, "Hey, can we do friends and family?" And we're like, "Sure." We kind of wanted to stay under the radar, and I, as a physician, yeah. I don't want patients. So instead, we thought we would have club members. Right. So it sort of evolved into the idea of let's not make a big deal out of this. Uh, but if people want it, and, and as, as Steve said, let's give good product at a good price to people, you know, help most people, you know, trust, you know, Steve has a fantastic reputation. You know, he's a known expert in, in all of this. And, you know, as well, I'm, you know, reasonably. So are you? A little bit. Um, I'm only I'm only an expert. Let me get her two books over here. <laughs> We're only an expert because I had to give her. Three, you know, three, you know. Look at that. I there you go. Like many doctors' and, books, but I did buy your book, and then I read them, and I used them in my life. No, but I I know what you're saying. But I mean, obviously, you're on the Jake Campbell podcast now, so like the the, the genie is out of the bottle. Like, yeah, you know. unfortunately, that's that that is in fact the case. But just so people know, and it. It is a club, right? And and the idea is, you know, we don't. It's not like a lemonade stand. Uh, it's a little bit fancier than that, um, you know. But but people come and we interview them ahead of time. Or Steve does actually. He's like doing the heavy lifting here to make sure people know what they're getting themselves into. They understand what exosomes are. You know, we talk about medical issues, and and then we do. We sort of come together as a group. And I have to say, you have to come to the next one because it's much like sort of a French salon type situation. Everyone shows up. We sort of rotate, you know, uh, injecting folks and, and treating them. But no one oh, ever leaves. Like, you don't they, have to ask my wife, Sandra. I mean, are you kidding never, me? Like, my wife will be there. Like, as soon as Stephen and you say, okay, this is the next one, she's going like, we're going to stay in the nicest place in the city, wherever it is. I got, I got bad news for you. We've got a date ready. <laughs> So people come to Vegas, they set up yeah. shop, they go see a show, they come to join us for the yeah. afternoon, and they just don't leave. So it's not like an in and out, I've been treated. It's just, it's a meeting of like-minded people, uh, which is just insanely cool. And our goal is to sort of grow that, uh, to do other things. Um, because we Well, it's going to grow. Oh, it's, yeah, well. You're going mean, to have to actually start no longer Super secret uh, knock to get into the door. It's more like I know Jay Campbell. I guess I'm getting in. Well, no, I wouldn't do that. Definitely not because, like, I definitely not. I, I, I there. Are, as much as I like to think I have a very high vibration audience, there's definitely some unsavory infiltrators too. So you definitely have to be cautious. Um, all right, so let's talk about this then from a pricing standpoint. Because again, I have a very sophisticated audience. You guys know that. Um, you know that's going to be their biggest question. So like, ballpark. I don't want you to get into the nitty gritty, but like. Comparing a ten to fifteen to twenty thousand dollar stem cell, you know, IV, P shot, shoulder, you know, knee, whatever, which most people in their minds like, what is it comparison to that from an exosome um, treatment protocol? Well, I'm I'm going to just say one thing. Um, I am not in the practice of P shots and O shots in hotel rooms because I could go to jail for that. Uh, I'll put them. I'll put them generally anywhere else. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that that's my physician uh claws out steve can do pricing <laughs> yeah so the, you can do a, a exosome treatment with us for 900 dollars, and then you can do a double double dose of that for 1600 a triple dose for 22 
Uh, you can contact us for higher doses than that. We have some people that go uh, well beyond that, that uh, we consider VIPs. We'll give them some preferential treatment, maybe a private uh, you know, exosome experience. But I will tell you this, I, and I'm pretty optimal, so I'm probably, my body's pretty good at adapting. And I, yeah. I always kind of speak from my, per, you know, we, I can yeah. talk about other people's stuff, but at the same time, I, I think, when I just talk about my experience with it, because I have a year and a half now with it, um, I only did the lowest dose for a year, but I did it consistently and to get overwhelmingly good enough re uh, resp uh, response that I said, this trumps everything I've done. I, hey, I've been using peptides for 10 years. I love yeah. them. They're like a laser beam for a certain, you know, you, you're going to get certain pathways you're going to turn on. But you, you know, an exosome was like, I always said this to Sandra, this is like carpet bombing yourself with growth factors and, and goodies, you know. So you just get this multiplicative return that is, um, it's fancy. It's really, it's really cutting edge. And, you know, I will sometimes recommend, hey, try a double dose if, if uh, or it depends. If you come with us and you have a certain ailment, like an injury. Uh, then, hey, okay, you made a trip out, maybe go for a little bit bigger dose. But I try to tell people, don't get caught up in the billions. That's where you're going to make the mistake because all the exosome companies are going, we have this many billion and we have this many billion and our billions trump your billions. And it's like, it's all fucking nonsense. Excuse my language. It, either your product works or it doesn't. And my opinion is, and I, I think Sandra's online with this because she does it monthly, is stick to a dosing frequency. Pick something, stick to it, level up your regenerative capacity over a, over a significant amount of time. That's my recommendation. If you can only afford a $900 treatment, I get it. That's where we made it for $900. Good luck finding that somewhere else. If you well, can, I'm all, let me know, you know. So, so well, let me ask you guys this. This is good information, but let me just ask you guys this. And by the way, Sandra, I wasn't even applying um, an O shot or a P shot with uh, exosomes. I, I, well, no, because I, I have done that private. I've never done uh, O shots. I've done P shots for, for people. Uh, yeah. And they do incredibly well. Um, but it, it is a little strange to do to strangers. Um, so that yeah, can be arranged uh, on a different level. But I did purchase the URL sexosome after, <laughs> after we had one conversation. I'm like, ooh. That's a nice market. Let's get sex in the Let's clean it. Okay. So, so, but like, let's talk about, because as Sandra said, to open the show geniusly enough, there are a lot of unoptimized people walking around in the United States today. So who will these not work for? Or th is there anyone? They will always improve your baseline to something else. The question is, what is your baseline? I was to say, so if you're cellularly inflamed, insulin resistant, 400 pounds, what I call a flaming dumpster fire. Oh, it's going to help you. We took oh. care of a very overweight young lady who was just inflamed from head to toe. She had, I think, a double dose. Uh, after that, she said she had never felt better. She came back the next day and had another double dose. Give me more. Yeah. yeah. Because she was, in fact, I would, I would argue that the worse off you are, the more improvement you have because you can sense it, you know, uh, as well as I've had a few people fly in for, you know, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, including some Crohn's. We've had a lot of osteoarthritis and like the worse you are, the more of a return you get. What about, what about people that have, um, uh, for, for men, like, uh, BPH issues? Uh, so, so the answer is BPH is it's cellular hypertrophy as well as inflammatory response. Yes. So to a certain degree, it's going to help you significantly, right? The, the only caveat that you have to be really careful about, and this is true for all longevity medicine, is you can't have cancer. Yeah, yeah. Because we are optimizing cellular processes and putting in growth hormones and regenerative factors. And the last thing I want to do is to, you know, make someone's cancer worse. So that's actually a really good comment of yours because, like, I don't know how much you know about BPA or uh, prostate cancer or BPH, uh, probably enough, but it's really underserved uh, awareness in America. Like any man who goes down that pathway, it's not me, but I have many friends and a lot of influencers and, you know, subject matter experts have dealt with this and 
you get in that nexus of the allopathic system and it's like, oh my God, like you have 12 different, you know, uro urologi urologist opinions on like, it's not cancer, it's, you know, a, a benign, but, you know, I, I, I recommend we resect it or we, you know, we do this procedure or that procedure. I mean, there's so many procedures and it's so nebulous, it's insane. But if you were going to use, if someone didn't have cancer and, you know, uh, you knew the Gleason score, you knew everything, but you knew that their prostate was inflamed, how would you approach an exosome treatment for that? Just systemic infusion. Awesome. So exosomes are truly amazing little creatures. Um, they go to where the worst inflammatory pieces are. That's all it's going to happen. You, yeah. So if your prostate is horribly inflamed, it's going to go there. If you have a pulled shoulder, a torn ligament, a this, a that, it is going to focus on the worst aspects first, uh, which is why Steve mentioned, if you do have that, we offer or suggest uh, maybe two aliquots because most of the first aliquot is going to target whatever's bothering you the most. And yeah. then second, as he says, I love this phrase too, the carpet bombing is going to cover sort of like the rest of you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting because I'm thinking of, and I have friends that will be wanting to come that, you know, are in their mid to late fifties and they have to wake up twice a night to take a piss. They don't have, a, they don't even have a PSA indicative of anything. Sure. They don't have any kind of Gleason issue. You know, there's, they don't have prostate cancer. Because every no man over 55 has a high risk of BPH. It's just right. what it is. Exactly. So, so that's my question for those people are exosomes an amazingly profound, like, you know, you're, you're probably only going to wake up once a night to pee instead of twice. I mean, uh, well, so the answer is we can't make any guarantees. We've had some people with PPH, but not enough to be able to tell you stats. Yeah. Well, I would imagine it's on the spectrum, much like everything else. I would imagine right. one treatment would make it better. Two treatments would make it even better. It also depends on how, you know, how much atrophy or how much uh, hypertrophy you have yeah. of the prostate. Right. If yeah. it's monstrous and you need a terp, then you need a terp. Like we're not going to cure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if yeah. it's, you know, can it improve it? Absolutely. It's just a matter of time and, you know, amount of treatment you're getting. So how long would two treatments be? I mean, would, would two treatments be back to back or would you have to take time in between? So Club Exosome runs quarterly. Okay. Um, I personally inject every month uh, just because they're in my freezer and I'm an anesthesiologist. so I can put my own IVs in. Uh, at the moment, we don't offer that for the club, but it is quarterly. Uh, and we are starting to get people that, you know, belong to our club and come yeah. every quarter. And honestly, yeah. you know, if you've got a few extra dollars, it's not a bad place to go. And uh, Steve is well connected in Vegas. So he's got some yeah. entertainment options for you. And uh, Steve's not, not as connected yeah. in Vegas as I am, but believe no. me. Yeah, you, you know, there's, well, there's definitely, there's definitely going to be a fan no out. lineups to Club Exosome after this podcast. And then after this podcast, you guys are going to have to cut it off. You're going to have to like come to a number and be like, oh. Okay. But, but listen, the, 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 anything with inflammation, these yeah. things just, honestly, they are amazing for inflammation. I made the mistake one time of kicking my ass in the gym and then dosing the day after. And I was super sore. Then I dosed. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, man, they all went to my you know, muscles. Yeah. And it was like, you know, and they're, they really are amazing for eradicating inflammation. It's it's that's one of the, the easiest things to to notice right off the bat with them. So so why don't you guys. Cause I said, we're going to be out of here in like six, seven, eight minutes. Like we'll talk about how you fit this into a, so, so let's give a couple of, uh, spectrum. So, uh, uh, the average Jake Campbell person is a biohacker, right? They're pretty fit, low inflammation, low body fat, you know, train with weights, exercise, cardiovascular versus an average normie on the street. Like how, what is the differentiation? I mean, are we still talking like you should do these quarterly each person? Yeah. So, well, so, I mean, I, it fits into your longevity protocol and everyone's kind of a different idea of what the longevity protocol is going to be. Right. Um, but my basic pyramid consists of, you know, a list of things you have to do every day, a list of things you do once a month, a list of things that you maybe you do once a year and so on right. and so forth. You know, every day you mentioned, you know, diet, exercise, right? Light therapies fall into that category, maybe uh, PM PMF mats. Um, I'm, as you know, I'm the queen of supplements. I take, you know, 60 supplements and 10 drugs a day. Uh, that's baseline, right? But then there's the stuff that you do every month. And in my world, you know, uh, Senolytics, 
uh, are crucial. IB exosomes are crucial. A few other IB things that I do are crucial. Like, for example, I don't believe in oral glutathione every day because I think it screws your feedback loops. Right. Um, but one IB dose a month is actually extremely potent, right? I also only, I don't take daily methylene blue. I take it once a month in my IV. So there are also these, like, you know, this is my longevity pyramid and everyone's a little bit different. Uh, right. But um, what would other people do? Obviously, they need to start with the obvious, the diet, the exercise, et cetera, et cetera. No one's going to fly to Vegas and, and dump a few thousand dollars into exosomes when they can't even make it to the gym. Uh, yeah. That, at least I don't think that they would. Maybe they would. Uh, it would, you know, it, it would be helpful for them, but it wouldn't sort of, you know, be part of a global process, which is going to be necessary for longevity. I'll make them. So, Stephen, you know, you know me and Monica. Like, what would be be? And again, be, be be totally candid. Like, what would we want to do quarterly? Well, I mean, I would say come in for a double dose. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it really. If if you, if money was a little bit like an issue, then I would say just try to the lowest dose. Try nine hundred. Yeah. I, I had great returns from that. But I would say, you know, try a double dose. I don't, I don't think, you know, that uh, what I always tell people is commit to whatever it is that's going to get you to go three times. Yeah. That's my opinion, right. honestly, because yeah. that's where I started really feeling like things were disappearing. And that's, that's my own personal experience. And again, I'm pretty optimal. Some people might need, you know, a year and a half maybe because yeah. they have so much, you know, stuff they have to do. I mean, uh, you know, my... When I look at a longevity framework, I, I you know, because you were asking earlier, I, I always say you got to start with the thing that's going to kill you first. Right. What did your ancestors die from? You better figure that out. You better have some sort of plan of action for the thing that's embedded in your DNA to eradicate you off this planet. Then get into your health span uh, stuff, you know, right. uh, your, your sleep, your diet, your exercise, your uh, stress and relationships and your environment. And then... Then you get to play, in my opinion, in the cellular space where not that you can't do that stuff, but it, it's it is, people get really cute with these these methylation tests and they say, oh, I just reduced my biological age by 12 years. And I always ask them, did you reduce the plaque in your arteries by 12 years as well? You know, right. and, and so, you know, the, the going after the cellular pathways with certain supplements, novel compounds, medications, exosomes, peptides, all that stuff. You know, and I, I always sort of say you got to have to go at it in that order. Get the thing that's going to kill you first out of the way. Get your habits, your behavioral habits and health span stuff tightened up. So so you're an adaptive. You're able to adapt. If you're not sleeping, you're not going to adapt. If you're not exercising, you're not going to be an adaptive machine. You eat like shit and you're not privy to how to curb that like Sandra is. <laughs> then it's not going to work for you, you know. Uh, and if you're stressed the hell out every single day, well, good luck putting some exosomes in you because... You're not going to get the same response more like is probably than you would get, Jay, being optimal. So, yep. you know, you could probably get away with a single or double dose and, and it would be great. And I would just say, just be consistent for a little while. And then you tell me if you didn't notice that, hey, some of these areas that I was banged up for a while, I don't really notice them anymore. So, so as an anesthesiologist, I'm going to add to your dosing regime and just say that it's also dependent on your body size. Yeah. Right. So I'm two ten. I'm two ten. About seven percent body fat sticks one. Yeah. So it, your body fat is moderately irrelevant. It's it's for example, as a pediatric anesthesiologist, every drug is weight based. Right. Right. So yeah. a hundred pound woman is going to need significantly less than a two hundred pound. Dude, sure. Right? right. So when people right. come to us, we're not there for the money. We're there to give them the right dose. Yeah. For example, if your wife is half your size, she doesn't need your dose. Right. Right. And, and so I, well, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this question because she's going to ask me anyway. But like, what do exosomes do for women's like anti-aging in the face, like skin, you know? So, so lots beauty. of things. So you can do several things. Um, and it, <laughs> I have to say at this moment, my face is not a good representation of this because that all. <laughs> I mean, I, I am so jet lagged from London. I can't begin to tell you. Um, but Thank you can. Thank you for being here, by the way. Oh, you're very welcome. Just exhausted. Uh, but so we do a lot of facial injections. So what you do is people purchase, you know, an aliquot, either a single double dose, and we'll take a CC, CC and a half out of that. And I'll do face, I'll do hairline, we can do scalp, 
uh, you know, pretty much anything. I had this one woman that pointed to 27 different areas on her body that she wanted individually ejected. I'm like, mm, okay, fine. <laughs> but it is not uncommon for a woman to say, I'm concerned about my face. Uh, and it's, yeah, you know, it's 100 times better than a PRP facial. Uh, you know, oh. and you use the 34 gauge needle, so it's infinitesimally small. Most people don't even notice that they're being injected. And it just, it really does wonders. Can you compare it? I mean, because again, I got to ask this question. Can you compare it at all to Botox or fillers or anything like that as far as the well, effect? Well, it's, 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 it's a different world. So Botox is simply a paralytic agent. Yeah. That's right. all it is. Paralytic yeah. agent, right? Yeah. Stick it there. Yeah. You can't move your muscle for three months and then you can move it again. Right? That, that's all it is. Right. Filler is filler. It's going yeah. to give you fake tissue right and then right. it's, it's usually hyaluronic acid and maybe some other yeah. crap thrown in there going to get metabolized it's going to go away uh exosomes regenerate tissue so over the course of time you are redeveloping your own tissue so it's significantly slower like you know if you inject filler all of a sudden there's a blob under your skin and you like go wow i look great right. it doesn't right. work that way with exosomes it takes time to regenerate tissue but usually when you inject it in the skin within seven to 10 days, your skin just looks better. Right. It just looks smoother, looks refreshed. Um, I mean, and then over the, the course of last time, Steve, Steve has like the best face ever. Mine's looking like shit. Uh, but Steve has a great face. And you could tell we've, we've been doing him intermittently. I taught him how to, and, how to inject yeah. his own face. Yeah. And, and my uh, hair yeah. too. She's been doing my hair and then my face. And then what I'll do is every time I do exosomes, I love to pair it with copper peptide. Yeah. GH Oh man. I, I, I'm a huge fan of copper peptide. I, I like for a woman though. Sorry, Steve, we love you, but you, you, you do have a baby face, but you don't have to for money. <laughs> so, so for a woman like Sandra, the optimal would be based on recovery and regeneration and restoration, all that. Would it be really once a month? Uh, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See how fast I read in between the lines? All right. Well, good. Well, I'll just tell one. Like Sorry, it's quarterly. You can fly to Vegas once a month and, you know, and do whatever. The good Sorry, baby. Quarterly. Yeah, we can make arrangements. Um, Sorry, Monica. It's quarterly. Did you hear what they said? <laughs> But but I but I do live in Miami and uh, it isn't. We're not far. <laughs> you are not. It's a five hour drive. I know this because I. Used to I'm do not it. driving, dude. I'm flying southwest to Fort Lauderdale and Ubering to you or taking a car. Fair. <laughs> Come back out to Vegas. Yeah, no. I mean, we'll talk about. Well, yeah. so 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 let me put Club Exosome up here for everybody before we end the show. So it's clubexosome.com. Obviously, go there and find out more about this. Obviously, there'll be notes in the show when this podcast runs talking about this, like how you guys can take advantage of this. Uh, go to Stephen's site, of course. Sandra is also Kaufman Anti-Aging on IG, and then her website is KaufmanProtocol.com. And again, buy her two amazing books, which I bought when they first came out a long time ago. Um, I think you and I did our first podcast. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was during COVID, right? During 2020. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So the real question is, 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 have you read the books? They look both of them. Oh, absolutely. I, I, take, I take almost all your supplements. I mean, I have all, all your book is highlighted. You know, I've gone through both of the books. Yay. Okay, that's good. Because some people yeah. just sleep with them under the pillow with hope oh, no. knowledge will sort of like seep in. No, I read like 10 or 11 books a month. I mean, I'm voracious. So, I mean, there, you know, I, I don't, I mean, there's like coming back from Mexico, I sold like 1800 books. Well, I didn't sell them. I mean, I took some of them and I gave them to somebody to like do whatever. What There were like 1800 books I got rid of. And did your books make the cut? To wow. Florida? I'm yeah. excited. Thank you. you. Are saying why. I, I'm impressed. Um, okay. So, um, Club Exosome, CoffinProtocol.com, StephenMcCain.com. You can also follow both of them on IG. Um, anything else you guys want to say, like as a final say, or are we done? Go for it. I don't have anything brilliant or insightful, Steve. Uh, I mean, look, these, we talked a lot about exosomes. They really, as somebody who's standing here, that's been in this space, trying stuff for 15 years, I truly believe they sit at the top of the pyramid in terms of having access to something that really can do some wonders for you. Um, I, I, I love them. I'm, I'm appreciate you having us on here to, you know, uh, it's always fun anyways, but to, to shine a light on this, it's, 
it's one of these things where if you look at how we price this stuff, we're not, this isn't some massive money maker. We truly, you know, are trying to democratize the access to these things for people that are like-minded like us. And I personally consider it a networking event. I love meeting people in this space. And I can't tell you how amazing it's been to just share a room for a couple of hours with these people doing this stuff and then be staying in contact with them. It really is not only a fantastic therapy, but it's a fantastic group of people. It's like get pooling together like-minded people, exactly like what we talked about in the beginning. So thank you so much for having us. Oh, man. Well, let me just say um, for the audience, there are still tickets. This is running on September 27th to 29th in Palm Harbor, Florida. Both of these two illustrious human beings, as you can see right there and then right there will be feature speakers. And this is going to be an amazing conference. So you can still, there's still time to book a ticket if you're out of town or if you're a local Florida person, um, please, it's good. It's be the wellness.com F O H live. And, uh, I will say, I will literally stop sharing, but again, appreciate both of you guys coming on. So ladies and gentlemen, and all the amazing folks that do watch the Jay Campbell podcast as always support the incredible individuals that come on like Dr. Sandra Kaufman and of course, Stephen McCain. And remember, raise your vibration, optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon and check out clubexosome.com.